All right, we are uh, about a minute past the hour and we're ready to start. Welcome everybody to today's webinar, uh, Group-Wise Disaster Recovery Q&A with Tay Kratzer, the developer of Reload. My name is Sheldon, I'm a marketing manager here at Guava. And before I hand it off to Tay, I just have a couple quick items. First, I know Tay has a few questions that he'll be addressing that were submitted to him beforehand. But if you have any questions during the webinar today, be sure, be sure to put those in the Q&A section of the WebEx or the chat that Tay can address those. And second, uh, this webinar is being recorded, recorded and will be sent to everyone who's registered today. Uh, also, you'll be able to find that on our YouTube channel, which is uh, youtube.com slash guava TV. Um, and with that, I will turn it over to Tay. Tay, are you on the line? I'm on the line. Great. Terrific. You can hear me? Okay. Um, Okay, I'll go ahead and take over. So, uh, you know, uh, I hope you're you guys aren't disappointed. I don't have a PowerPoint. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna move away from PowerPoint today and just get right into the software. But um, first off, what I want to do is I want to talk about uh, what Reload is for just a moment. I assume probably most of you already have Reload, and so this is probably a super quick review. But um, Reload is is uh, gives you the ability for push button disaster recovery uh, of post office and domains, um, but you also can quickly restore mail. What, what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to go here into, oh wow, that really changed the fonts and stuff on my GroupWise client. Uh, uh, but anyways, I'm just going to work with that. Okay, so let's just say I've got a message here, um, you know, uh, from Steve, okay, um, and from 924. Now let's say um, that I delete that item. Notice my trash is at 201 items, okay. I'm going to do a right mouse click, uh, delete and empty, and say yes, and sure enough, that item's gone. Now let's say, you know, a while later, tomorrow, whatever it be, I say, hey, I want to get that item back. What Slick is, is if your post office is on uh, Linux or Windows, um, this functionality is, is really slick. It's uh, reload and group-wise just go hand in hand where uh, the user doesn't even have to exit their client. They can just go to um, the, the backup option that's either under file, open backup, you know, um, or, you know, it's just here in the little rocker bar, okay? And I'm going here. Now, here's what's happening is, is the uh, live GroupWise post office that I'm on, which is a, a Linux uh, post office uh, out in Montreal, Canada, um, it has a persistent NFS client mount to the reload server, okay? And we have a restore area that's always defined. In fact, we have a feature called auto reload. Auto reload is just the notion of the most current backup is made available so you as an administrator don't even have to you know if a user needs to get something back and if it's from the most you know recent backup then you as an administrator don't even have to go and do an anything um, it's just available to the end users um, when they do a file open backup and so that's what we're experiencing here now it's taken a it's taken a minute uh, partially because I'm in Provo, Utah, and this is in Montreal, Canada, where all the data is. But uh, also what's going on is is the GroupWise client and the GroupWise POA, my production POA, um, they're, they're kind of doing this uh, combination where um, the client's saying, hey, here's what I've got, this is what's in uh, the message store, and the POA saying, okay, I'm going to look in the restore area, which is really data over on the reload server that it has a mount to, and I'm looking to see what um, is in the backup that isn't in your production mailbox. And for some reason, this is taking forever. And like 10 minutes ago when I tested this, it took me like, you know, a couple seconds. So um, I don't know if it has something to do with our network or whatever it be, but in a moment that'll come back. And what's, what'll be slick is, is we're going to only see just a few items because it's the, um, it's the backup and it's just going to show me the items that aren't in my live mailbox, okay? Um, and so we have probably got to reload the GroupWise client here or we'll just move on and wait for that to happen because I think we're just having a very slow network response to our Montreal server. Okay, well, while that's, while that's churning in the background, let me show you another thing, okay? So not only can you restore uh, mail rather quickly um, with reload, you have what's called push-button disaster recovery. So here's the idea. 
you know, your, your reload uh, backup keeps hot backups on your reload server um, and uh, in a very efficient manner. Uh, reload only requires backing up about 12% of the size of your post office every night, um, and yet it's as though you have 100% of your post office replicated over to the reload server. That's done through the magic of symbolic links and you know uh, linking up to data that we've already backed up in the past. Okay, and so um, so you your typical customer keeps around a week or two of of backups, maybe more if you've got enough disk disk space um, on the reload server. So the most current backup um, uh, is the one that uh, um, when you click the disaster recovery it uh, rolls over to just had experience with this last week had a customer um, they um, had to cut over to their reload server the size of their system was like I think uh, it was over a thousand users on this particular post office went off great it took us about 10 minutes to to do the stuff inside of reload because they hadn't you know, hadn't uh, configured one or two little settings so we got that all go going in about 10 minutes and then it took them about two hours um, because it turned out they had some DNS issues and so forth, and, and they hadn't designed their uh, web access to talk DNS to the POA, and so uh, so they had to fiddle with DNS uh, entries and so forth. But but the post office was up and running in a matter of 10 minutes over on the reload server. So um, now what's happened is is you'll notice this up arrow. We're in disaster ready to service user requests. You just need to figure out how to direct the users to this uh, to this uh, IP address and port where the reload server has a POA up and functioning. Uh, and so, again, that's done easiest through DNS, but you don't have to use DNS. Uh, you can go into GroupWise administration and say, hey, the POA is over at this IP address, and uh, that will resolve itself too. So that's uh, push-button disaster recovery. Um, let's see if... Uh, if yeah, my my group wise, um, it's it's interesting because it was only after uh, doing the screen sharing that some really some stuff really went weird. The fonts went weird, and now the group wise client. So we're going to just load that client back up and and see if uh, we can demonstrate that because uh, I think that session just kind of went funny there for a moment. Uh, so let's come back over here. Let me just authenticate. Okay, and this really is supposed to be just super easy. We just go here, we go to backup, and what we will see is what is not. You notice the fonts are better this time. That's good. Okay, and there we go. Okay, perfect. Yeah, something went funny with the session. So now what we're seeing is is we're seeing the items that are in the backup. Where's the backup? It's on the reload server. Okay, um, and uh, uh, I didn't have. There's nothing's installed to the client. The groupwise POA simply has access to the data on the reload server, and then I can highlight this item that I want to restore and just right mouse click restore, and the item goes right back into my mailbox. That was back on 9:24. A message with Steve and Steve Darrell, right there. That's the that's the one that we just restored. Okay, that we were able to bring back. So, um, quickly restore data. Uh, disaster recovery is push button, um, and uh, so that's the that's the core message behind Reload. That's um, you know it, it gives you the peace of mind um, that you have a full-on disaster recovery system. But you know, unlike uh, other backup uh, or disaster recovery so solutions that just kind of sit there over on the side that you don't really use, um, you know, Reload is a usable backup. It's, it's it's very simple to get stuff back. And what's nice is is because it's so easy to go in and to to choose a day that you want to access a backup for. You know, you go, yeah, you know, that's when I want to get the backup for. You turn on that access, um, and then you actually access that data. Every time you're using Reload um, to get stuff back easily from backup, you're actually testing your disaster recovery solution because it's all the same data and it's really the same procedure. Okay, so that's a that's another really uh, nice thing about the the design of Reload. Okay, um, now let's uh, see here. I've got a little slideshow that I've got on the side that's kind of helping me to remember anything that's uh, important. There's nothing that you have to inst have installed on your group-wise post offices or domains, um, uh, although we're going to talk about a new architecture that, that kind of changes that if you'd like to use that architecture. Um, and oh, another really important thing is, is Reload truly is a backup because it integrates with 
um, what's called smart purge. Okay, smart purge is the notion that uh, items cannot be uh, deleted from GroupWise until such time that they're backed up by the reload server. So uh, other backup solutions uh, don't integrate with smart purge, and really all they are is a snapshot in time. Now what's also nice is is you know for long um, long keeping, you can enable tape backups. So you can take those those uh, post office backups, and once a week, uh, Reload will take that post, post office backup set and it'll push it into what's called a tar file. Um, and then you can take and put that tar in another place. What we do here, for example, on this particular post office is it gets tarred up. Um, and then what's really slick is under advanced settings, you can go in and you can put a um, put in a command to run either before or after or both um, the, the tar command. And there's this script that I wrote for them, and it basically uploads it to our tape server. And uh, the tape server then uh, captures the tar file, and uh, that then they they then handle um, taking that offsite, et cetera. So, um, so it integrates even with some of these you know kind of older type technologies. Uh, integrates very very well with those, and I'm, I shouldn't call them older technologies. I should say mature technologies because uh, I still see tape archive as a very viable uh, thing to to have as part of your backup solution. Okay, now. So that's uh, that is you know the base of what Reload does for you. Now what I want to do is is um, I want to talk about Reload 5. Okay, now, Reload 5 um, has some major improvements over prior versions of Reload. Um, uh, some architectural difference. Okay, uh, the biggest architectural improvement is the addition of, of a new collector server model. Okay, so let me just show that to you here for a moment. Okay, um, here's the idea. With the collector, you can design it that you actually have a collector installed right on your GroupWise server. Um, and so the collector, you can have a collector profile for post offices and domains. Now, here's what the collector does for you. Here would be the advantage to implementing a collector. When you implement the collector, the collector scoops up data from your um, live post office and sends it over to the reload server vis-a-vis -vis rsync. Okay? So um, what's really slick about this architecture is, is the amount of data that has to be transferred is significantly less. Remember how we talked about, you know, about 12% of your data has to be stored, uh, you know, for a backup. Well, that's still the case. That has to be stored, but 12% doesn't have to be transmitted. It's probably going to be the equivalent of three or four uh, percent using the collector model. Um, so basically, what happens is, is uh, the collector uses DB Copy to copy the OF user and the OF MSG directory to a little staging area right on your group-wise server, and you can designate wherever that location is, okay? But you do have to have the size of the OF user and OF MSG minus the index directory, just, you know, off of OF user, okay? But the size of OF user and OF MSG times two has to be available someplace on the group-wise server. And then what happens is the collector transmits um, from there to uh, from the backup that it just obtained, okay, from the live post office um, and vis-a-vis -vis DB copy, and then transmits the data from a little staging area to a staging area over on the reload server. Neither of those databases are in change during the time of the transmission, and all that's that's transmitted is the deltas to a particular database. So quite a bit less data has to go across the wire. I'll give an example. I've got a um, trucking firm that I was working with last week, and um, they uh, their backups were taking about an hour uh, to get the backup from you know, you know to to the reload server, and we put in this uh, collector server model. Basically, all you do is you install the collector to the um, to the, the, the where the post office was, and uh, and you do, there's this little linking process that goes on, and bada bing, that was all working, and his hour long backups now were only taking 15 minutes. 
which is really exciting for him because this um, meant that uh, he wanted to do intraday backups, um, and we were doing um, uh, backups uh, every hour uh, during business hours um, and uh, transmitting vis-a-vis -vis this collector. So super powerful feature, but not only that, a collector can send the data not only to your, you know, the reload server, your primary reload server that you've already established and so forth that's on site, but you, your collector can push to an off-site reload server. Okay, um, and so, or it can even push it to a Guava cloud server. It can push it to all three. And um, what's really slick about this redundancy is, is let's say, for example, that you're pushing it to, you know, your primary reload server, and then you've got an offsite reload server configured. Okay, and let's say, for example, that mm, for some reason, you know, the primary reload server uh, isn't available for whatever reason, um, and your collector tries to push it there, and then he goes. Oh, gee, I can't get a hold of that guy. Well, that doesn't shoot the whole backup. What will happen is, is he'll send it to the offsite reload server, no problem, uh, you know, assuming this one's accessible. And uh, you know, when the next backup goes on, let's, let's assume this guy's back up, then uh, he'll send it off to this server. And of course, you'll get notification from the collector that, you know, gee, I tried to replicate it to this guy, couldn't, you know, but uh, it moves on. It doesn't, it doesn't get balled up and say, oh, gee, you know, I, I can't get, you know, to, to server one, and so thus this whole, you know, this whole thing goes out the window. Uh, it just proceeds on and, and pushes um, all the way through uh, whichever uh, servers you've got defined. Okay, so super powerful feature. But now what's also slick is is some people might go, yeah, okay, I really want to um, get a uh, a backup offsite, and I'm alright with this collector, but I don't want the collector to be talking with the offsite server. So that's what I've actually designed here. Is is right here, I've got. Um, uh, no, this actually isn't a good ex – yeah, I do, this is a good example. Okay, so here I've got a regular profile, and this is what's called a collector. And the collector, um, this one is getting the backup from the post office. Okay, so this is the first backup that goes on. And then what's, what's um, really slick is under here, under backup job settings, there's a new option here for advanced settings. You can link this – beg to PO profile is linked to collect one. So what happens is, is um, when this, this one finishes getting a backup, he tickles this one and says, hey, go ahead and get a backup. And this collector, the way we designed this collector, if we go here and we look at the local post office path that it's pulling the data from, Notice this. Notice it's data, beg to PO, connect current. See, every reload uh, profile, uh, be it post office or domain, there's a directory called connect. And off of connect, there's a symbolic link to various different things. And one of them is called current. Current is what the most current backup is. So what happens is, is um, this guy is the you know, regular profile that gets the data, and this is a collector that's been designed to pull the data from this profile okay, and push it to um, an off-site reload server. So now, here's the off-site reload server. Let me just quickly tell you, too, um, here, um, this is in uh, Canada, Montreal, Canada. This server's in Montreal, Canada, and this one's in Provo. So this one in Montreal, Canada, the backup goes on to here. It gets pushed from here over to this profile. Okay, um, the entire process of replicating the data. Um, I need to just look at uh, this um, from you know the one to the other is. Uh, you know, I just want to look here if I can give you the amount of time here. Okay, uh, that's a portable. Sorry, I should have my two minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Yeah, so the entire process is about 15 minutes for it to get backed up and then replicated from Montreal, Canada to Provo vis-a-vis um, -vis this method that we're using. Okay, all right. So now I don't have to use this method in which I have um, 
you know, uh, a collector on the reload server. I could just have the collector over on the post office, and it could be replicating here to this profile, and it could be replicating here to this profile. But I've just decided to, to use this design so you can see, um, you know, the, the architectural differences um, and uh, use whatever you're most comfortable with, okay? And just as there's collectors uh, in this, uh, you know, collector server model for post offices, same thing for domains, okay? So what this enables too for, for who would ever like it is, is let's say you've got a partner or someone, you know, that you work with and so forth, and you're like, hey, I want to implement reload, um, but I don't want to allocate the disk space and so forth or, you know, uh, to, to put a reload server in-house. No problem. Um, you just have the collector, and the collector pushes to the reload server that's off-site. Now, another important thing, too, here for, for architecture is the reload server that's off-site needs absolutely no access into the firewall or into the system um, where your post office is or your on-site reload server, what happens is it's a push mechanism. So this reload server and the collector here, for example, is pushing the data straight over to this server. Now, the firewall does have to be open over on this end. Um, a port has to be open for this guy to transmit the data over to this guy that's off-site. And the one that's off-site, um, for those of you who are going to be partners and so forth and, and spin up your own reload servers, um, <clears throat> what's nice is you can control the performance settings, um, you, you can actually, um, you, you have a, a remote control of just a few of the settings, but the settings that impact the performance of your server. So typically I find, uh, particularly when a customer put the, puts the collector on their post office, their post office is on a right and proper server, okay? It's in great shape, nice, nice fast disks and so forth. And I've seen um, the collector um, and the post office just be sitting there just twiddling its thumbs and everything's fine. And the poor uh, reload server is just, you know, being taken behind the woodshed because it's not uh, is uh, doesn't have as good a disk subsystem and so forth, and so it's really getting kicked hard by the collector um, that's running on the live post office. And so, um, you know, your your partner uh, has the ability to go in here and say, yeah, you know what, let's let's you know let's let's decrease the amount of threads and so forth that are being used. Okay. You've got a question. Okay, all right. Um, so that's a uh, super powerful free feature. And I think there's a question that's coming through. And I know, and I know I've got other questions that I will be addressing. Um, but uh, if uh, Sheldon, did you want to cut in or did you have a question? Yeah. Yeah. We have a question that says Does this configuration still require the EC module? No, there is no requirement for the EC module. Okay. So very very good question. Um, so this all comes in for free inside of Reload, um, this collector server model. Uh, the EC module has its own uh, particular benefits, but, uh, but no, this doesn't require uh, the EC module. This just comes with Reload 5, okay? So good question. Um, <clears throat> Okay, so we've talked about the collector server model, okay? Um, let's talk about a couple other really exciting features um, with Reload 5, okay? Um, uh, so we've talked about faster backups, backup redundancy, right? You can have it um, replicate to... Um, Servers. In fact, you could even, you know, go with a partner and and just put a backup in the cloud. And we do have partners that provide this too. Just you know, um, and uh, now there's some other advantages. Reload 5 has a major architect architectural difference uh, that eliminates the need for portable backup, the portable backup routine. Okay, so the notion of having to make that um, entire new copy of a backup set and so forth. That all goes away. Uh, there's a different way to, appro to accomplish what the portable backup was trying to accomplish, and so we're doing so without taking any additional disk space. So uh, whenever a, um, it's now, it's now there's now what's called a maintenance job routine um, that basically takes off where the portable backup routine went on, but uh, it takes. Uh, uh, it, it, always after that routine runs, you will have more disk space <laughs> and not less. And uh, 
um, and it doesn't take nearly as much CPU and processing and so forth. So since so many of you are on VMware and so forth, that should be a, a welcome change. Um, so your, your disk space requirements for keeping backups uh, is uh, significantly less, um, and the CPU requirements, uh, you know, the cycles being taken away are uh, going to be less. So I think you'll find that really exciting. Uh, another question uh, that came in, too, was uh, SLES 12 support. Yep, Reload uh, will supports SLES 12, and it already supports uh, GroupWise Cornell. Why do I know that? Because um, Novell always calls me up and says, okay, we're putting Cornell out in our system, but we need to make sure Reload's working with it because they use Reload as their backup. So um, it's already supporting GroupWise uh, Cornell uh, and so forth. Um, another person asked a question, you know, why is it that old versions of GroupWise always come with uh, uh, Reload? Well, you can easily put in um, uh, a different version of GroupWise uh, um, yeah, so I don't really trouble myself with that. I just trouble myself with having some version of GroupWise uh, there, particularly so that we have DB copy and the agents um, on the you know on the reload server, so that you know immediately we know that backups can go on. Um, but uh, if the version of GroupWise on your reload server doesn't perfectly match your live system, no problem. Just just rip it off and put on um, the, the code that that best matches your live environment. Uh, the reason I can't ship with all the different versions and stuff is is um it would be rather bloated <laughs> your uh, your your download file for uh, reload and and I'm just trying to minimize that so now what's the upgrade process to get to reload 5 um uh it's just like it's always been you know the simple upgrade process menu driven um and uh uh, what's also slick is, is you know, now that those of you who implement collectors, um, when the server gets upgraded, so let's say uh, you implement Reload 5 and then we come up with, come out with 501 or something like that, you um, uh, upgrade the server and the collector will just upgrade itself from the server. Or you can upgrade the, 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 the collector in an exactly the same manner in which you uh, upgrade uh, the, the, the uh, server. Ser the server and the collector interfaces look exactly the same. So you're not going to have to learn some new uh, funky interface. And what's slick is when you go into um, a, you know, a collector that's paired, okay, so this is what's called a collector, and the collector is paired with a server. You, there's a little link right inside of it, and then the server even has a link pointing back to the collector. <laughs> um, and so it's really easy to kind of hop back and forth uh, between the two. Um, okay. Yes. We had another question about yeah. the collector, if it also runs on Windows PO. Good question. Uh, collectors do not run on Windows post offices. Um, Probably 95% of our customers are on Linux, and so I didn't try to address the Windows or the NetWare environment. Um, then, uh, but the good the good news is is those of you who are on Windows and NetWare, um, you know, uh, the method that's been working all along continues to work. So there's no uh, there's no dependency on that, and you can also get the benefits that you want um, to be able to replicate to another location using this this method that I've shown you here, where you basically have you know your your um server profile that's backing up your post office in your domain in kind of the traditional manner, you know, vis-a-vis -vis amount, right? And then um, that is then linked. You remember under here, I went to configure and I went to backup job settings and, and I said, hey, link this to collect one. And so then collect one is a collector that happens to be running right on the reload server. And, uh, and then the collector can then push uh, the data off-site um, as needed. So, so you get you know a lot of those benefits, but you're right, you don't get the benefits of putting it right on your uh, Windows box or your Netware box. Um, uh, so, so good question. Okay, okay. So um, I think uh, just to quickly give a summary, okay, here's what Reload 5 is going to do. It's going to give you the, um, the ability to you know, utilize the collector server model uh, no matter what platform you're on. You're going to get the benefit of being able to replicate to other locations, which is super, super helpful when you think about um, you know, disaster recovery and, and, and so forth. Um, and um, it's going to use less disk space, okay, less processing. Okay, yeah. all right.
So we'll go we'll go back to this. I was just doing a quick wrap up on uh, what Reload 5 uh, does for you as a collector server model, faster backups, uh, backup redundancy, uh, and uh, SLUS 12 and, and Cornell support uh, will be inside of uh, Reload 5. Um, availability slated for October 2015, but I'm, I'm, uh, you know we've got several customers uh, that now have this, um, and I just want to make sure we've worked out just you know the tiniest bugs. Uh, people are very dependent on reload just being solid and just running kind of like an old netware server used to run uh, just forever and ever and ever and so I want to keep that keep up that uh that, that uh, status, and so um, we're going to make sure that this is uh, rock solid before we ship uh, reload five okay now I want to talk about um, the next exciting thing that's coming in reload five um, is uh, support for reload for retain okay so this might this might be a new thing to wrap your head around um, so let me just um, show this to you here. Um, I've become very familiar with Retain. Uh, I work uh, here and support quite a bit on Reload and uh, Retain and Redline. And uh, um, what it, what's been surprising for me is, is uh, the struggles that people have been having with uh, backups for Retain. In fact, what's been really surprising is there's a lot of people that aren't even backing up Retain. They seem to have the notion that Retain is the backup uh, for their system, and so um, and so they're. Uh, treating it as such, and so the challenge is, is you do need to back up retain, um, and uh, so reload can create a hot backup for your Guava retain system, uh, and disaster recovery for Guava retain, and even redundancy for Guava retain, and that's something that I I want to help illustrate here in a moment. Um, but first off, I want to talk about the retain data store. Now I hope this isn't wasted on most of you. I think most customers have retain. Um, um, uh, but uh, let me just put up front that if you've already got Reload, what's exciting is is you pay a nominal fee for um, what's called the uh, Reload Collector for Retain, um, and you use your base license for Reload. Uh, you know you've already you know paid for the seats that you've got of uh, uh, you know to, to, to obtain the server. So you just have to pay a nominal fee for the collector, and you know you don't you don't have to spend a whole lot more. Now, if you don't have Reload, then um, then you have to obtain Reload. Uh, or if you don't have GroupWise and you don't have Reload, then um, that you, then you need to obtain Reload. But, anyways, uh, so back to this, uh, what you know, what Reload does for Retain. Okay, the Retain data store architecture is actually very similar to GroupWise in some ways. Okay, so GroupWise uh, contains databases, indexes, and blob files. The, the blob files, um, I call them blobs. Those are in the OF files directory. Okay. Uh, now, in a GroupWise post office, there's 250 some odd, you know, 256 uh, directories off of OF files. But I'll tell you a little secret. Okay, only half of them are used. Literally, you'll never find any files uh, in in one half of those 256 directories. So, in, so technically, only 128 directories are backed up uh, when you back up uh, the blobs off of a GroupWise post office. And then all that you need to do to, to get a backup is get the OF user the OF MSG, the indexes, you know, the WP host DB, um, and get, get the blobs. Now, the way that Reload backs up um, the blobs directories uh, is, is similar to how other backups might. It has to go into the OF files directory. It goes into one of the directories, you know, like let's say FDF, and it says, okay, I've got, you know, 10,000 files here. Okay, what's on the Reload server? Oh, I only have, you know, 9,800 files. Okay, then I need to copy over these two files. Now, you know, a little, you know, down very deep, what happens is it's an iterative process where you're going, okay, here's a file. You literally have to identify each file, and you have to say, this file is here on the production system. Is it on the backup where I'm backing up the, the, the this you know the blob files too? Yes, no. Uh, if no, I replicate it. If yes, skip it. Okay. And so that's that's how you back up data. Okay. And that's a very traditional method. Now, um, since there's 128 directories, what Reload does is it it gives you the potential to spin up 10 simultaneous what we call blobs threads inside of Reload. Okay. And uh, let me just show this to you here for a moment. Uh, so we go here, configure backup jobs. 
settings, a uh, little coaching here on Reload. For a lot of you customers, um, you can get faster backups if you increase what's called the Reload blob threads. And those are basically separate instances of DB copies, separate mounts to the production server, and separate instances of DB copy. And amongst those instances, they kind of each have a little chore chart, and they, okay, you do these directories, and you know this next thread, you do these directories, okay? And so, um, so that's how Reload speeds up backups is by taking that 128 directories and potentially splitting it up into 10 separate jobs that are running simultaneously. Okay, so that's really slick inside of um, Groupwise um, and Reload that we can do that. Now, <clears throat> let's let's now contrast that with uh, Retain. Okay, Retain has a database. Retain has indexes and Retain has blobs. But here's the tricky part. The blobs inside of Retain are potentially in 16.7 million, and I've rounded that down. <laughs> There's more than that. But anyways, it's you know about 16.7 million directories in which a, um, uh, you know, a fully uh, you know, uh, uh, filled uh, Retain system is going to potentially have 16.7 million directories. And if it doesn't have 16.7, your typical customer has millions of directories. Now, Think about the process of trying to get the data. Um, you get the databases. No problem. Databases can be backed up. There's great backup software there for backing up uh, you know, any one of the platforms that, uh, that Retain runs on. Okay? So Retain runs against databases on either MSSQL, MySQL, or um, uh, Oracle. Okay? Um, MSSQL, what's cool is, is there's even Azure Cloud backups for the, the Retain da database. Um, the Reload Collector for Retain can back up your database, database if it's on MySQL. It basically just does a dump and dumps that to a tar. Just to give you a sense of how much disk space, I dealt with a customer the other day. They had a 220 gig database for Retain. It was actually pretty sizable, but after the dump to a tar, it was about 20 gigabytes. So, um, so that's all that had to be transferred uh, from the Retain server over to you know the destination uh, server. So, um, so we can get the databases if they're on MySQL. If it's not on MySQL, you have to back up the database. Okay. But the blobs, this is where the the, the software really really shines. Is is instead of having to sort through this big bin of blobs, you know the 16.7 million directories. What um, Reload does is, the, the collector, is he queries the database and says, okay, I know, you know, since the last time we talked, it just it keeps timestamps. So, since the last time we talked, um, you know, uh, tell me uh, what blobs you've put inside of this big bucket, okay? And so, um, you know, if imagine, you, I hope this looks like a big, big container. That's what it's meant to look like. So can you imagine um, each blob is similar to like a little BB inside of this uh, huge uh, silo, <laughs> okay? And so um, there's a bunch of BBs in there, um, but which, one is, which ones are the new BBs, right? <laughs> because those new BBs need to be replicated over um, to uh, you know the 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 destination the the reload server that's going to um, uh, be your backup, and so what uh, what um, reload does is is it gets. Um, the information vis-a-vis -vis the database. It's, uh, it's actually a pretty simple query, believe it or not. And then um, makes a manifest list, and that tells him where to find the files that he then needs to replicate over to the reload server. Okay, all right. And so, and that, uh, there we go. So um, uh, the, the, the net effect is, is instead of having to, you know, uh, go through all of those directories, um, it's just got this manifest and it can get stuff very, very quickly. Okay, um, So the very first backup that Reload does for Retain is going to be just as slow as all your other backup solutions because it's got to go through that process of you know, um, just copying every file over manually and just searching through 16.7 million directories. So it's a, it's a tedious thing. It's 
threaded. Um, but my typical customer that I've implemented this on, because I've used this in quite a, quite a few places, um, typical customer, you know, about the best we can do is about three threads. Okay, If we use more than about three threads, we seem to lose some efficiencies on the disks and so forth. So, so um, I just had a customer just today call in, and uh, we'd replicated his uh, data in 43 hours, okay, is how long it took to get that initial replication, okay. So, um, so that's going to take a long time. But it, the times after that, okay, uh, this is this is a. Um, let me give you an example. Let's say you have a thousand user shop uh, that's got retain. Um, with 5,000 unique messages being uh, generated per hour. So when I say unique messages, what's really important to remember is, is what's really cool about Retain is, is you have single instance storage, right? So if I send a message from, from user A to user B, that is not a unique message. That, that, is, that is not beyond one unique message. That's a unique message, um, and, and that's it, even though there's two recipients, okay? And then if that gets forwarded to another person, it's still um, uh, that same unique message. So uh, this is pretty high, the notion of generating 5,000 unique messages per hour, um, but uh, uh, I figure that uh, the, the collector will, will back that up um, with a 10-hour workday, um, that it'll back up, uh, when it, if it does the backup, you know, like once a day, it'll do so in about 20 minutes uh, to back up all of those archives. And uh, if you've ever tried to back up Retain, you'll know how impressive that is. I've got a, a bank uh, on the East Coast that's got 3,000 3, some odd users, and, and they're one of the ones that kind of beat me over the head to make this because they said, look, uh, uh, we have requirements that we are supposed to have backups of our Retain system uh, you know, every 24 hours, and we're at the point where we are passing over the 24 hours, and so we're not in compliance. And uh, so uh, they're um, just, you know, can't wait uh, for this solution to come out uh, for them. Um, and uh, just, you know, this uh, runs um, on the uh, SUSE Linux platform, but it can back up your data, be it on a, a Linux box uh, or uh, on a, a Windows box, no problem, okay, because retained data can be on either of those platforms. Ret uh, retained data can be kept in databases that are either uh, MySQL, MSQL, and Oracle. Um, we, we, we will support all three of those database platforms. I already know how to do it for MySQL and MSSQL. Oracle just takes a little bit of research, and I've got a customer finally that um, is going to help me to uh, figure out how to perform those queries against Oracle. It's just a, it's a learning curve for me on that. Um, so <clears throat> now we've already made you very familiar with the notion of um, um, – well, maybe I need to go over this here for just a moment um, so that you understand why you need to get a backup. I think I need to convince several customers um, that they actually need to get a backup. And, and here's why. If you lose the database, um, then all those blob files don't, you do, don't do you a, a darn bit of good. You're not going to be able to knit together a retained system from just a bunch of blob files. Um, so um, vice versa. If you lose blob files, you lose content. So yeah, you've got a database that says, no, well, there is something there, <laughs> but, but the actual content uh, could very well be gone uh, with the loss of the blob file. Okay. Now indexes can be recreated, so you know uh, the, our collector does back up the indexes. But even if it didn't, uh, you can recreate those. Okay. And miscellaneous files can also be recreated, license files, you know AS config, and so forth. That can all be recreated. But it's very important that your database and your blobs are backed up. Okay. Um, and I've talked here, and you can review more in this document of, of different methodologies that people use. And I, I'm sure there's other method, methodologies that I haven't uh, explained um, in this document. But um, uh, let's just skip down here with um, you know why reload for retain. You know other backup technologies. I call them cold backups. Um, you know the data is sitting someplace. It's disparate. Um, and you can't really fire up against it and use it in any manner or, or test it very easily at all. Um, 
And and so I I like to say that other back t- backup technology is just that they're a backup. They're not a disaster recovery solution. Um, you, you know, f- uh, for the retain server. Um, another thing is that that reload for retain is a retain centric backup. It's not just looking at it; it's just as data. It's like okay, how can I actually benefit this person um, to have this be a redundant uh, uh, re- uh, you know retain server? Okay, um, and there's there's a architecture to uh, to the backups that's very very clever. What it is is I use what's called a manifest architecture. So here's the idea. You notice uh, uh, you know uh, the collector will query um, the retain database and get its manifest. Okay, and then what happens is is the manifest is used as to, to tell the collector what data to to send over to the reload server. And then the manifest after the job's done, manifest is sent over to the reload server, and the reload server has a module that then um, takes and looks through the manifest and says. Yep, that's here. Yep, that's here. Yep, that's here. And then what's also nice about that architecture, you remember we talked about the ability to have a profile that's then, so here we've got a post office profile that's actually linked to this profile. So this is a normal you know, profile, and then this is a collector. In like manner, you can have it where um, you've got your backup that goes on by one collector, and then the other collector can then take the data and it can replicate it to, you know, off-site uh, reload servers, okay? And <clears throat> these collectors don't have to have access to the database, okay? Because this, this could be a collector that's off-site that then replicates to another, you know, server, okay? Um, but they don't have to have access to the database because the, the, what they feed off of is what's called the manifest that was made by the original collector who spoke to uh, the retained database in order to get, you know, the marching orders for what's today's backup, okay? Um, so uh, it's a very efficient architecture um, um, in like manner, just as we spoke of the, the collectors, um, the server, the reload server um, that's, uh, you know, uh, at a partner site, for example, or here in Guava's Cloud, uh, has uh, absolutely no need to uh, reach into uh, the live system in order to be a backup solution. The data is transmitted from the collector over to the server, uh, so the firewall rules and so forth on our, are on our end or your partner's end, um, and they don't need to have access into your live system. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so we've talked about the triple replication, manifest architecture, uh, push-button disaster recovery. Now, um, that's said, I should put a little asterisk there. Um, so, some important aspects of that is, is, you know, let's say you lost your retain server and uh, it uh, had MySQL, okay? Um, that uh, could easily be a disaster recovery scenario where we could we can make push-button push button disaster recovery, okay? That's no problem. But um, let's say you had I don't know, your data center got hit, right? You know what I mean? And boom, you lost your you bought, lost your database, and that's on MSSQL, and you lost your uh, um, uh, retain server, and that's on another box, and but it's all underwater or something like that, right? You know, and but you but fortunately you've put in you know um, your reload server um, out you know offsite, right? Um, but uh, we're hoping that you have a disaster recovery solution for your database. So if you're on MSSQL, for example, I sure hope you've uh, you've gotten a relationship with Microsoft and that you've you're, you've been backing up your database and uh, to the Microsoft Azure Cloud. And then I'm sure they can help you to to bring that up. And then you just you just go in and you point the uh, reload server that's running over. I'm sorry, you point the retain server process that's running on the reload server, you just say, oh, yeah, you know what, the, the database is over here, and it's just an IP address uh, and a port, you know, really, uh, but uh, it's just going to talk to that uh, MSSQL database over in, you know, the cloud or wherever else you've replicated it. Um, and uh, same idea for Oracle, okay? So um, 
<clears throat> then you'll also have the ability to restore a blob file. So let's say you're, you know, you you somehow, you know, I don't know, you had some kind of disk corruption or something like that on the retained server, and you want to restore blobs over to it. No problem. You can restore them from the reload server. And 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 really, what it is is it's once again it's the collector that's pulling the data from the reload server down to uh, the the uh, production retained server. So again, once again, there's no need for any kind of firewall rights or access. Uh, for you know your offsite reload server to be able to get into uh, the the uh, uh, network of your live system, okay, um, <clears throat> and uh, there's a, it's also got a very uh, clever threaded architecture, um, and in my current testing, we re we can replicate about 3,000 blobs uh, per minute vis-a-vis um, uh, -vis this method. Um, and uh, so that's why I came up with these numbers here of about 20 minutes to back up a, you know, a, a typical 1,000-user shop. Uh, we've got big, big shops, and we've got little shops, and so I think 1,000 though is a, is a good average for our customers. Um, other features that come is on the, the reload server, um, you know, not only is, is checking the manifests and holding the data and, you know, configuring things and so forth, but you'll also get statistical reports, email notifications, uh, integration with Nagios and PRTG. Um, uh, someone's got solar winds. I'd really like to talk to them because I know a lot of people do, and but I haven't got anybody to help me on uh, trying to make sure we can integrate with that. Uh, there will be a backup status uh, dashboard for your retained backups and uh, full web, you know, uh, based configuration on the reload server. Um, and uh, so let's talk about the architecture, the potential architecture. Okay, you can have a reload collector for retain uh, on site. Uh, runs on Linux. Uh, Windows Windows servers are backed up directly by the reload server, which also hosts the reload collector server software. Sorry. Um, alternatives to this is you can have an on-premise collector only model. So the reload collector is on site using minimal disk space inside of a you know, like a VM of a, a SLES server, uh, unless it, there's a MySQL dump that you need to do and then you need to take into account volume sizes to match the requirements of the dump. Um, and uh, the reload collector can then push the backup to the reload server, which is offsite in a, a partner cloud, for example, or your offsite location. It doesn't have to be a partner. Um, and uh, and then there's the collector server collector server model <laughs> times three. So it's basically the reload collector pushes to an online on-premise pr reload server, and then the on-premise reload server then can can uh, host a reload collector that can then push uh, to up to uh, three other reload servers. Okay. So now let's just talk about licensing for a moment. If you've already got reload. This is going to be super cheap because all you have to pay for is what's called the collector, which is a nominal fee. It's not it's not nearly as expensive as buying the the reload server, and so uh, so that's great. And for those who don't have reload, you do have to you have to buy the reload server. It's price per mailbox. But here's the really neat thing is is the number of reload servers is not limited. So you know let's say you you want to spin up these multiple reload servers and so forth. We're not going to charge you a penny more for that, um, and uh, you know just just uh, uh, you know, you're, you're paying for the per per seat fee, and that pays for your licensing. So, um, okay, I think we have got five minutes here for questions. Sheldon, do you want to open up for some questions or have a method to share with me what those are? Yes, yeah, so we've been. Uh, there's been a couple that we've already asked you. I just wanted to put that out there, everybody. Um, put that in the chat or the Q&A. We do have one more that just came in. Is the licensing for the collector for as many collectors as needed? The way it's licensed is is the seats that you have. Everything that we do, okay, the reload server is, is and we charge you for seats. The collector, we charge you for seats. Um, so um, it doesn't matter how many instances of collectors or servers or, you know, however you want to do that, we're not going to charge you for that. Okay, so um, so that's I, I hope that answers your question uh, correctly. I'm looking here to see if there's any other questions. Is it, okay, all right. Any other questions uh, that I need to field? I don't see any at the moment. Just give me. Okay. Uh, did, okay. Did now we able to get to the questions that you had uh, before given to you before the the webinar. Yeah, okay, you're right. I should address those. I first also want to mention to you, um, anybody that wants to look at um, what I've talked about here, um, 
there's, if you go to reload.guava.com forward slash reload5.pdf, you'll see the introduction to Reload 5. And if you want to look at the one for retain, it's reload.guava.com forward slash retain.pdf. Okay? So really easy uh, way to, to be able to reference this information. Okay? Okay. Um, yeah, so back to the questions. I think we actually addressed, someone asked about SLES 12. Yes, that's supported in 5. Uh, why are agents for group-wise integration uh, every time outdated? We talked about that. How can we bring backup storage requirement to reload? 12% changes per backup is huge. Um, and I think, so I think they were asking, you know, gee, every backup's about 12% of the size of the post office. I mean, it's really, every backup is the size of the contents of OF user, the index, and the OF, so if OF user and then OF user index, and then OF MSG, and any new blobs. And there's no way to reduce that. Now, but that said, okay, uh, what's really slick is, is um, now portable backups go away. And so without the need to make portable backups, oh my goodness, you're going to see your disk space requirements uh, go down. Um, and so I think that'll be addressing the question that someone was seemed to be complaining about disk issues. So I think I've addressed all of those questions. Uh, anything else that's come into you, Sheldon? We had one more come through. It says, because yeah. you were backing up both live uh, POA and retain, does this mean that users can restore from both uh, from both through the backup button? Oh, no. Uh-uh. That's a great question, but no, you, you can't restore from retain vis-a-vis uh, -vis the backup uh, button. Um, the backup button, just you know, is something made by Novell and it integrates very nicely with Reload, but it's because the data in the Reload uh, message store uh, is, is entirely native group-wise format, whereas the data that's inside of Retain is not native. It's uh, in a completely different database and blob format. And so uh, that feature, uh, you know, that'd be nice if Novell did that, um, but right now it really only integrates with Reload. It doesn't integrate with Retain. Um, there is, you know, when you do have retain, uh, there is a button that you can put into the GroupWise client, um, but uh, but th that's a manual uh, install that you have to, you know, figure out how you put that in there. Great. I believe that's all the questions I have on my end. Okay. Well, terrific. You folks, uh, I really appreciate uh, there was... Uh, 70 some odd people or at least uh, signed up for this so I appreciate everyone taking the the, the time and uh, we uh, hope to hear more and uh, Reload 5 uh, we're planning on shipping this in October sometime and so looking forward to talking to new Reload 5 customers take care and have a great day thank you Tay just as a reminder uh, this was recorded and we will send it out to everybody who registered as well, it will be up on the YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to Q or myself, and we'll get those answered. Thank you very much.